Welcome to this special series of Rendezvous with me, Zainab Badawi, coming to you from the old town of Jaffa in Tel Aviv. And waiting in our green room, Deputy Foreign Minister Danny Ayalon, a former ambassador to the United States, has also been an advisor to the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And my first guest on Rendezvous here in Tel Aviv is Danny Ayalon. He is the Deputy Foreign Minister. He's from the Yisrael Beit Anu Party, which means literally Israel is our home. Danny Ayalon, Deputy Foreign Minister, welcome to Rendezvous. Thank you. Pleasure to be here with you, Zainab. Thank you. Now, would you say that when it comes to Israeli politics, Danny Ayalon, that you are more to the right and that there are those who are in the centre and to the left of you, especially when it comes to this issue of peace I, with the Palestinians? Yeah, I, I, it's very complex. I would say we're pretty much centre to the right, absolutely. Uh, on social and uh, economic, we are very much right down to the centre. On defense and on foreign policy, yes, to the right of the center. We do believe in a two-state solution, also with the swaps of uh, land and population, which would be, I think, very much incongruent with uh, former historic achievements in Europe. You have been ambassador to the United States um, between 2002 and 2006, when George Bush was president. Do you think that the United States has any influence in this matter, the um, Israelis and the Palestinians, can it really bring the two together? I think so. I believe the United States is the indispensable country here, uh, not only because of all the uh, investments it has made through the years in the peace process, but uh, uh, we wouldn't have been able to achieve peace with Egypt back in 79, uh, or with Jordan back in 1994, without the, the Americans. They are the ones who give the support in terms of financial, economic uh, safety net and also political and, and military or defense as well. It seems that Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, seems to say, well, I don't see eye to eye with the United States when it comes to the issue of Iran and other things and so on, that Israel really just thinks it can go it alone. Well, Washington is, is a host. It is a mediator. But uh, various successive American presidents said that they cannot uh, replace the parties in the negotiations. They can just give support, they can just give encouragement, and they have been. Uh, Mr. Netanyahu, to be fair to him, he agreed to the uh, request from uh, President Obama to freeze settlement activities altogether for 10 months. He did that. So, I still see the Americans have a, a role which uh, would be unique. You know, um, Sipi Livni, who until recently was leader of the centrist Kadima party, which has more seats in the Knesset than any other party, says that Israel stands at the mouth of a volcano. And she believes that nobody here really, in any position of leadership, has any real interest in trying to find some kind of drive for peace. She's got a point, hasn't she? Well, it's a, it's a point which is uh, more uh, politically oriented than really. You know, there is a volcano, but the volcano is all around us. And I think what we see with the Arab upheaval, also called the so-called Arab Spring, shows to us and to the world what are the real problems, the structural problems in the Middle East. Yes, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is one of the problems, but it's not the problem, it's not the main cause of instability lack of human rights and civil rights and any economic opportunities to more than 350 million Arabs who have lived through tyranny, dictatorship. And now the problem is that we see more radicalization, more Islamism, and uh, which also lends itself into uh, terrorism. This is the main issue that we would like to see a real Arab Spring, just like in East Europe. So you don't think there's an Arab Spring? I mean, it's been described by some people here in Israel as an Islamist winter. Is that how you see it? And what would be the knock-on effect, do you think, I'm, for any potential peace? I'm afraid the upheaval we see resembles more the uh, Islamist revolution in Iran in 1979 than the Velvet Re Revolutions or the or or Orange Revolutions in, in East Europe. Do you really think that's the case, though? Because, I mean, the revolution in Iran w is one which was, has got a very anti-Western agenda, whereas you've got uh, the Muslim Brotherhood led by um, uh, the President Mohamed Morsi in Egypt and, and, the, and also al Nahda in Tunisia. These are not anti-Western Islamist movements. They're just political Islamists. There's a difference. Well, we'll have to judge them by what they do. 
and we'll have to make sure that they really abide not only by international law and international agreements, but also, also that they would bring into their people what they desire in terms of uh, developed civil society and economic opportunities. We still have to, to see what is happening, but the fact, the fact that the Islamists won over the youth, all these authentic uh, uh, people who came to the streets, whether it was in Egypt or Tunisia, we see that they were just kind of thrown by the sideway. And the Islamists, who are much better organized, financed by very extreme foundations, whether these are Wahhabists or whether they are mm -hmm. Ayatollahs in Iran, are taking over. We'll have to make sure. Now we, we have a case in, which is still unresolved and probably for a long time in, uh, in Syria. And uh, this goes, we can go country by country in the Middle East. There are those now, both Palestinians and Israelis, who say two-state solution is not going to happen. Let's go for a single, unified, democratic state, because they say in the end, demography is what will deliver the Palestinians what they want, because they're roughly the same number, if you include the Israeli Arabs and count them as Palestinians, six million and six million. My conclusion is quite the opposite. If we want to avoid balkanization, like uh, in former Yugoslavia, we want to avoid the murderous times in Sudan and uh, South Sudan. If we want to avoid uh, com conflicting and, and friction all the time, we have to go for the two-state solution. By the way, this is the mode today all over with the breakup of the Soviet Union, with the breakup of Yugoslavia, with the breakup of Czechoslovakia to Slovak and Czechs and South Sudan. So it would be very artificial, would be very unwise to suggest to put together uh, two nationalities with different identities, with different claims, with different territories.